So in Unit 9, we worked a lot with waves in general, and specifically the properties of the wave sound. In the next two units, we're mostly going to be dealing with light waves. But the nice thing is a lot of the properties that were true for sound in other mechanical waves also carry over for light. So grab your notebooks, whatever it is you normally use to take notes, and let's get into it. So first off, a thought experiment. Where does light come from? Of course, we know that there are objects that emit light, there's objects that emit microwaves and infrared radiation, but where does it actually come from? So in our thought experiment, let's say you're holding in your hand a magnet, just a typical bar magnet, and you move it. Because you are moving this magnet, you're creating a change in the flux around it. Remember the flux is the magnetic field multiplied by the area, the cross-sectional area, that that field is exposed to. So let's say I am creating a magnetic flux, and that flux is changing because I'm moving it. If I move this up and down and I shake it at the right frequency, that will also create an electric field. Remember, we called this induction, that a changing magnetic field creates an electric field. Well, what happens if we do this really, really, really fast? Imagine I'm still holding this magnet in my hand and I shake it up and down and up and down. Well, that changing magnetic flux creates a changing electric field signified by these blue waves here. So all an electromagnetic wave is, is an alternating magnetic field that's red with an alternating electric field that's blue. This is a doubly transverse wave because the direction that its amplitude is moving in, in this case, we'll call this the X and Y, is perpendicular to the direction that the wave is moving. Let's call this the Z direction. To be fair, we know that light sources aren't little tiny magnets shaking around really fast. And to be fair, when I say fast, I mean the frequency would need to shake a magnet up and down approximately 10 to the 15th times per second in order to make just one photon of red light. So where do they actually come from? Well, they come from transitions as electrons move in different energy levels through the atom. As they change energy level, it causes a decrease an energy level so that energy turns into light. So electromagnetic waves are emitted when electrons change their energy level. Now that electromagnetic wave or photon, both of those are going to mean the same thing and we'll talk about more of their distinctions later on. That electromagnetic wave or photon of light will travel un, unimpeded, there we go, unimpeded through a vacuum. Since that light has its own electric and magnetic field as its own medium, having particles in the way actually slows light and other electromagnetic waves down. In case you missed it before, that means light travels fastest when it goes through a vacuum and slowest in every other material. And we'll work with it more another day, but the speed of light is very, very fast. It's so important as well that it gets its own symbol. The speed of light symbol is C. And C is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. It's so fast that light leaving the earth could bounce off the moon and come back in just about 1.2 seconds. This GIF actually shows light traveling from earth to the moon in real time. So that brings you to today's assignment. I would like you to go on a scavenger hunt today. Your job will be to find each of the seven different types of electromagnetic wave radiation and figure out how they relate to each other. Since these are all the same form of radiation, they all travel at the same speed in a vacuum. They're all doubly transverse waves created by alternating electric and magnetic field. And they all slow down when they reach new materials. Those three properties are going to be true of all of the waves that are on this page. So let's walk you through today's scavenger hunt. First off, watch the video that will be appended to the end of this in just a second. 
Record the seven types of electromagnetic wave in order from lowest frequency, that is lowest energy, to highest frequency, highest energy. And as for the frequency energy relationship, imagine it's something like this. The frequency is how many times per second the magnet gets shaken up and down. If I have a high frequency, like I need to take this magnet and shake it more times per second, that would make more energy. More energy going in means that photon or the electromagnetic wave emitted has more energy when it comes out. Then for each type of wave, take a photograph of an object that produces that type of wave. Then these should be photographs that you take yourself. Paste those photographs onto your chart. They would go right around here. Next, we want to find objects that are approximately the size of a wavelength of that form of light. When you reach the scale of the universe app, scroll in and scroll out until you find a type of wave that is one of the electromagnetic ones. For instance, like this FM radio wavelength. Radio waves are a type of electromagnetic wave, and it gives you their approximate wavelength. Now, everything on the page that's about the same size as an FM radio wave will be near it. So about something measured in meters might be a giraffe. So maybe an FM radio wavelength would have an object as a giraffe. And remember, you may need to scroll all the way in to find all the waves you're looking for. And you might need to scroll all the way out if you're finding that this scale of the universe uh, interactive is not working, there is a YouTube video that goes slowly through the scale of the universe by slowly zooming in and slowly zooming out. So even if you can't figure out or can't get this interactive working on your iPad, you can watch the video for the scale of the universe, and as it slowly zooms in and out, you could take, for instance, this FM radio wave and notice that it's near the giraffe. Giraffes are about the same size. And for your last bits for your poster, I'd like you to do some research on your own. Figure out what do humans use each type of wave for, and whether or not they're considered ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation are waves that have so much energy, they can break the bonds in DNA and other cellular structures, causing damage to the body. I bet if you think hard right now, you can think of a type of wave that does this. And I do want to emphasize before we get to the video in step one, I do want to emphasize that you can enlarge this document so that you have enough space to write. You can also choose to make this poster or assignment into Google Slides, or in any other format you want, this is the suggested one only because it contains all the necessary parts of the assignment. But if there's another format that gets all of these points, feel free to use that as well. On this day, we'll see beyond the limits of human vision. Normally, we see light waves that bounce off objects. They beam into our eyes and onto our retina at the back of our eye, where an upside down and backward image appears. It's turned into electrical impulses that race to the brain. which allows us to see what we need to survive. But there's a lot we miss. We only see the rainbow of light waves called visible light. But that's just a fraction of the millions of wavelengths in the vast electromagnetic spectrum. Some of this invisible light has waves longer than the rainbows. 
such as infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. Others are shorter, including ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma. These waves radiate from the sun, space, from everything around us. On the rooftop, there are creatures that can see other light waves. A bee can view the world through ultraviolet light. It can see UV markings on flowers that guide bees and other pollinators right to their pollen. All of this is invisible to you. You just see a bee feeding on nectar. Even a mosquito has an advantage over you. Through infrared vision, it can see the heat patterns on your body. Warmer spots means more blood near the surface. We have cameras that can see like a mosquito, revealing what's hot not. The brighter something looks, the hotter it is. Some wavelengths can pass right through objects. Wonder what's going on inside the apartment building? Gamma rays can show you. With x-ray vision, you can see an egg hidden within a quail. The mechanics of an animal in motion. what's going on inside anyone's body. Radio waves can also pass through us. An MRI can use them, along with magnetic energy, to show your heart beating. The more invisible light waves we can see, the more secrets we uncover about the world around us. But that's only the beginning. Only the beginning of your assignment? Awesome. Now that you figured out the seven different types of electromagnetic waves and put them in order, get to researching, upload to Classroom, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Remember, email with any questions. Bye!